You're listening to Brigade Radio One. Welcome to the Antisocial Show. Welcome to another episode of Anti-Social Show. Tonight, we will kindly please ask you to pass the succotash. I am Hunter Block, and he's... Tyson Saner. And uh, as Hunter has alluded to, uh, we have a guest for the program. Uh, he's not joined us yet, but he will be joining us shortly, and it is none other than Mark Hershon of Succotash, the comedy Soundcast Soundcast, now called Succotash Shut-In. Yes. And uh, we look forward Rightfully to Rightfully so, because... Rightfully so, because, you know, with uh, quarantine coming up uh, again in our state, I mean, it makes perfect sense. It's kind of like you're doing it from a fallout shelter, really. Um, sure. You know, so, by the way, anyone out there that hasn't played Fallout Shelter, I would get that game and get into that because, you know, the apocalypse is coming. Are you talking about the uh, the free app that uh, is available for various platforms, including, like, phones and whatnot? Uh well, there's that, and then there's also, you know, the uh, the game Fallout uh, Shelter for uh, PS4, Xbox 360, uh, you know, is, various... Is that the one where you, you do the planning and you put, you know, you have to put people in various rooms and assign them tasks and whatnot? Well, that's that's the one for the phone, or for your for your uh, tablets and whatnot. That's just called... Fall, uh, that's just called... Uh, I got shelter. it on... It's called Fallout Shelter, the one I'm thinking of. I, yes. did, I, did, a, I did one of them, uh, an episode of it for... Tyson Sander Gamer, because I wanted to see how, yes. how close it was to the version that was on my tablet, and it's near identical. <clears throat> yes, but I mean the one the one that's obviously the ones that are for the actual gaming consoles are a little bit more in depth than just putting people in the room. But I got the one on I got that one for my phone too. Cool. So I have like three I have three shelters right now, and I'm I'm placing various people in their little rooms and giving them jobs and 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 whatnot. And uh, three shelters, just uh, three separate shelters. Three separate shelters, yes. Huh. And uh, in, in my main shelter, where I have quite a few rooms going on, huh. I successfully uh, 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 battled off some marauders, marauders, marauders that wanted, to, yes, marauders yeah. that wanted to try to uh, take my shit. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, no, wanted to take your stuff. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, um, now I'm when it comes to the version for the phone. Um, I am very unsuccessful. This is probably my fifth attempt trying to play this game. Oh, I've got a message from Mark. Okay, continue. And, uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, this is my right. fifth attempt. Attempt. Now, the last time I was, you know, I had, like, a whole bunch of rooms. I, I mean, it was going really nice. And, uh, yeah, that's when everything started falling apart in a big, bad way. This I'm ready to add him to the call. So, uh, oh, gotta, go ahead. I, I okay. can, uh, yeah. Fall, we, we fall, can, uh, fall. You can ask him about it. He might have played this game, so I'm going to add Mark to the call here. So, Fallout Shelter to be continued for a second. Yes. Hello, yep, gentlemen. Yep. There we are. Hello, Hello, Mark. What up? How are you, sir? Uh, let's see if I can move this where it's supposed to go. And... Now right. you're covering my... There we go. There we there go. We go. Look straight. at us. Oh, Look at us. Three handsomer gentlemen there's never been. <laughs> and so yes. stay all of us. Um, nice to see you, sir. How, you been? How have you been? I've been good. I've been good. How about you guys? Oh, we've been all right. Eh, not bad. At least I've been. I mean, considering, uh, I guess we got good news tonight, which is excellent. I saw that yes, on, on, on uh, YouTube. Yeah, it looks like the concession has finally occurred. Wrong. In a, in a sense, without actually conceding. Right. <laughs> right. It's not Trump's not going to be in there. So I probably read. one of his lack, probably one of his lackeys will come aboard and say, you know, uh, it's all yours. I'm out of here. 
Yeah, you know, exactly. He's not going to actually concede. I don't see him doing this. I mean, no, it's not his way. I'm waiting no, for the 4 a.m. Twitter storm of uh, taking it all back, but <clears throat> we'll see. We'll see. Right. The week is young. Now, I don't know how true this is, but I, you know, people make fun of him that he goes on, you know, the toilet at 3 a.m. to uh, do his tweets. But I heard somewhere that he doesn't actually t- uh, use Twitter. I heard he gets somebody else to do it, and he just tells them what to say, basically. Uh, yeah, the idea that he can he, he can actually type semi-coherently seems beyond, beyond the pale at this point in his life. <laughs> There's so many all-caps uh messages and in fact i i was looking at those two tweets that that you know are basically what everybody's calling the concession and i'm thinking 100 percent he did not type that in himself that is something that is like was constructed because it almost sounds sane and rational except for the we will continue to fight but which is like dude seriously yeah. seriously dude yes dude yeah exactly. no seriously <laughs> He, he he's telling his his fan base that you know once he's out that he will continue to fight, but once he's out, you'll never hear from him again. Oh no no no! Oh we'll, we'll oh I think we'll be hearing from him. I just you think so? Oh sure. He, uh, I mean the defendant often has to take the stand. Uh, that's very true. <laughs> Trump is the epitome of nobody asked me, but yes, and he has been. Right. Remember, remember the old birther thing? I mean, not to go political because we rarely do political stuff, but I mean. Like, like mm. that bit where he's in an interview and he's like, I don't know, I heard maybe he wasn't born in America. I don't know, that, that whole bit. And that's just how it started. And he's got so many Twitter followers that uh, it's like, look, I did a I did a number comparison once and I figured out that um, he's up to like 88.9 million people now, but uh, or maybe it's gone down. But at one point he was at something like 67 million when I did the numbers and then I looked at it and went, you know, he has a Twitter follower for approximately how many televisions were in households in the 1970s. Yes. yes. Basically yes. that's how many households had a television and they love him cause he's a TV star. Well, plus it's oh, like, God. Like you just go bloop, 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 so bloop, and everybody could be like, Oh look, he said bloop, 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 bloop. And it happens instantaneously. I believe, yeah. I believe there's uh, actually just a good cross section of them that are probably doing it for morbid curiosity. So probably it has the effect of making him think he's more popular than he is. But it's basically like you know a person in a car accident waiting for the ambulance to come and then seeing just the cars slow down to look at them and thinking, "Hey, I'm doing great. <laughs> I'm really popular right now." Drip, 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 drip. Well, I mean the the, the fact that you know he needs that type of notoriety. Um, you know, because it gives, it does feed his ego is just, you know, it's, it's, it's a shame if, if you need that much, you know, if you need someone telling you that you're doing good all the time and look at me and you, you know, it, it's pathetic. You take that away from him. He has nothing. Mm-hmm. Honestly, that that's what he's going for. He doesn't right. care about being president of the United States or actually doing some good. Certainly doesn't seem like it. It's neat how that, that mug just sort of appears and disappears. I, I went through this a little bit when we, uh, we recorded, um, no, sorry, I recorded an episode of a show I'm working on uh, that I'm trying to put together called Happiness or something like it, mm. and I managed to snag um, uh, Letitia or Tish Burns from um, Dino and Dana's Safe Space. Uh, oh, okay. And formerly Skull Juice, a thing I used to listen to. I didn't know this podcast existed, and then I went back and found it, so I've been listening to it and kind of like catching up. And we had a really good conversation, and in the meantime, I, I was using a background, which I'm not now, uh, people can't see this, but it's blurred. They'll see this when this is eventually a video version, but uh, but I would I had a still frame from Bioshock, and I, I uh, and I, like this, this microphone's here, you can kind of see, like, it, it comes into focus yes. if it's there, but it wasn't there, so I was talking for a while, and then I kind of randomly leaned over, and it popped into view, and I kind of, oh, good, <laughs> I forgot it was, it's all about, because you can't. See, I'm here. You can. It's just blurred, but this is fascinating. So, so. yeah. Well, I, I I had forgotten to load this particular background into this version of Skype on this particular computer, but I like doing this when I'm doing interviews because it looks like I have a professional studio. It's very cool. It's like it looks. Um, it's bowed slightly. Yeah, it yes. looks like you're in a round corner. Yeah, it's shaped just for just for succotash. Perfect. This would be a this would be a professional studio, and it, and it kind of is, but it also houses all my shit that my wife doesn't want to look at. So <laughs> it serves multiple purposes. Of course, 
Goodness. Hopefully, a lot of that stuff absorbs sound. <clears throat> uh, actually, no. I mean, it, it, I don't have to worry about it because this house is made of cinder block, my dude, and the uh, bedrooms are on the other end of the house. I mean, I can scream in here all I want, and uh, she'll never hear it. Oh, no, it's not for the soundproofness. It's for getting a good, like, quiet recording of, like, gotcha, gotcha, no gotcha. reverb and whatnot. Like, I have those foam squares up on my wall over there for real, but, like, on that side, it's nothing for now, you know. And So, like, anyway, it's it's all. Well, I mean, you know, knock on wood, considering the fact that in the early part of the, you know, early years of this show, we had to deal with so many, you know, different issues, and including sound, of course, but. I mean, we haven't had any any real issues lately uh, on the show, at least not that I'm aware of. That is true. Technical difficulties have been less over time. Right. Don't know. That's always right. a, that's always a good thing. Very much so. And equipment matters. Uh, apparently, it does. Apparently, it very much does. So, um, <clears throat> Mark, Mister Hershon, it's nice yeah, to see yes. you. Yes, about Mark. With Hunter, me. nice to see you. Nice Tyson, to see you. a pleasure always to see you, sir. Thank, thank you. Um, I have created a quiz, is, which is something that I do for uh, our first-time guests for the most part. And since you okay. are, in fact, our first-time guest. Wow, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I just want to I just want to I just want to I just want to uh, point something out to uh, our, our good friend Mark here. Yeah. And, of course, our, our listeners, dear listeners and Mark. I was the, 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 the reigning, undefeated, defending heavyweight champion of this game. And, okay, and, and this is what happened, dear folks. We had uh, two very lovely uh, ladies on the show uh, last time. Uh, they were gracious enough to join us, and we played this game, of course. Yeah. Um, now, this was the first time we played with two guests at this. Well, yeah, this is the first time we played with two guests mm-hmm. on the show and had two guests on at the same time. And I was winning. Until Tyson uh, brought out the, the, the musical questions, which I suck at, and that's how I died. Well, that was the tiebreaker, actually, is what ended up happening. But um, Right, right. So right. If, yeah. if you just give me a moment, <laughs> I'll be right back, and then we can get sure. started. Sure. Yeah, I, I, I'm good at some trivia, yet I have vast trivia blind spots. So we'll see what happens. <clears throat> oh, it's, it's, a, it's a really fun game. I look forward to it. Uh, okay, he's got his hosting jacket on. Yes. Wow. Right. <laughs> we do things professional around here. This is, this is my game show jacket. <laughs> I love how you guys don't don't scrimp on the on the effects. It's beautiful, professional jacket. <laughs> oh. We try. We definitely try. And so, even professional shirt, we got one of those too. In fact, you got one, Mark. I hope it still fits good. I, yep. It does fit. I just, I don't. I'm not wearing it tonight. I should have gotten it, but my wife is asleep, and if I go in and wake her up, she'll get very angry. Uh, I, I, I'm waiting to lose. I'm, I'm waiting to lose weight to fit mine again. Oh, uh, that's right. I think you mentioned that. Oh, and so the guests we had were uh, they were Cassandra Cardenas and Erica Curry of. Uh, trashy trashy podcast oh yes yes who I, who I clipped for a second to shut in on episode yes, you, yes one, you did two six i can't remember which one it was yeah, it wasn't long ago it was fairly recently 216 that's the one so yeah it was and it is definitely more recently now that we're getting them out every week um that i can <laughs> and it would definitely be a uh an even numbered one if, uh, uh, all right so this is uh, a book I picked up at Powell's Books in Oregon, uh, gosh, I don't know, 10 years ago now, maybe? It's hard to say. It's going to be backwards, but it's called Depraved and Insulting English, and in the word in the effect okay. is oh. trying to... There we are. So these are oh, words yeah. that have fallen out of fashion. It's also called Words to Offend and Amuse. All right. Now, you deal somewhat in words, do you not, sir? I deal strictly in words in my, in my job, my job job, my day job, if you will. Mm-hmm. Uh, where I am a, uh, I guess you could say I'm a branding expert. Uh, I create uh, brand names and work in what we call the verbal disciplines. So I mm. create messaging and voice and also everything that a brand can do. I help put those words together. So it's very cool. I, I like. I have always liked the idea of of that job. The way you've described it is in my head. It seems really <laughs> fun and interesting to come up with a way to uh, call something something that is 
call something a call a thing something that is memorable and yet unique and also theoretically doesn't uh, run into any international problems by sounding like something uh, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Offensive in another language, theoretically. Uh, it is it is uh, threading a narrow and narrower eye and a needle to uh, get a successful brand name legally screened and passed and linguistically cleared, as you were just talking about. Particularly if it's an international trademark. So yeah, it's uh, it's a lot of fun, but it's also a bit harrowing when you uh, are attempting to uh, get a client <laughs> to be pleased with your words and when you go, well, the only word we could clear has no vowels in it. Do you like that? For the <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I, uh, yeah, I actually, I have a, I showed uh, our guests a, uh, a game fan, which was basically a little uh, game boy that has got a fan built into it. And <clears throat> it's a small thing. The screen is like maybe an inch. I don't know, but um, uh, the, the name is printed on it and it's basically, Consonant, 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 two of the same vowels in a row, consonant, consonant, consonant. So I don't know really how it, how it's pronounced. It could be Shadir. <laughs> That's a very popular um, way to try and get a registered trademark through the toughest trademark database, and that's in China. The Chinese database is notoriously difficult. Really? Yeah. Very interesting. I'd like to know more about that. That's like in, uh, what is that, uh, Starship Troopers. Would you like to know more? Would you like to know more? So, <laughs> this game is called "What Do These Mean Words Mean?" And thank you. And it's it's a <laughs> a multiple choice. Uh, I will give. I have five okay. words I've picked out. Each has three meanings. Only one of the meanings is the correct meaning. I will say the word. I will spell the word, and I will tell you if it's a noun, adjective, verb, or whatever, and then give you uh, what it may okay. or may not mean. And then, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, All right. Well, this sounds like fun. I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. First word. It starts with an M. The word is macromaniac. That is spelled M-A-C-R-O-M-A-N-I-A-C. Macromaniac. It is a noun. Does it mean... One under the delusion, excuse me, one who is under the delusion that a part of his or her body is larger than it actually is. Is it an unhealthy obsession with dwarves? <laughs> or is it a tactile addiction to yarn and beads? Interesting. I like the fact, I like the way you've crafted the, uh, the answers uh, very much in the style of a uh, definition of some sort. Um, Thank you. Uh, Let me know if you'd like to hear any of those again, or how. It's no, I'm just th I'm just thinking that because you've you've done also a very good job of making them very close to what uh, certainly the the combination of word parts used in macromaniac could could mean. <laughs> so it's. Uh, I am going to say, it is. Is it two or B, the second answer? It would be The B. unhealthy obsession with dwarves. That would be B. We are doing letters. I'm sorry. I should have said. Uh, yes. So I'll put down Mark for B. And yes. Hunter, what is your guess? I would have to go with A. All right. And Hunter goes with A. And Hunter gets the point. Oh. It is, in fact, one under the delusion that a part of his or her body is larger than it actually is. Nice going, Hunter. I was going to go with that thank one. You, but, thank you, uh, thank you, thank you. I do have an unhealthy obsession with dwarfs, so I just, uh, <laughs> I was hoping that at last I'd found the name or term for that, but apparently not. Um, I, I would imagine it would have something in it that sounded like Fellini. <laughs> I almost, I almost went with B because you know it, it, it. A lot of sometimes these answers are like so wacky and outrageous that you know I sometimes don't go with the answer that 
uh, sounds like it's supposed to be, if that makes sense. So I yes. almost went with B, but then I was like, nah, wait a second. <laughs> Let me just go with A, just in case. I, kn- I knew it had nothing to do with yarn, of course. Yes. Yarn. Oh, well, yeah, that was a... Yeah, a tactile addiction to yarn and beads. That, that's... <laughs> yes. Yeah. From macrame. Macrame, okay. yeah. <laughs> you, you got that was me being a smartass. Uh, <laughs> but that's the fun of this game, for me, anyway. Uh, oh, and my wife, by the way, always helps me prepare these. So Oh, very good. So we write very them good. together. I should mention that at the top, because I usually forget to mention that. Uh, delightful Laura Singer. Laura, yes, who is, in fact, hopefully asleep right now. I hope she's sleeping. Um, anyway... Uh, The next word begins with A, and it is Anoya. That is spelled A-N-O-I-A. Anoya. Excuse me. Okay. Uh, Anoya. Sorry, the the emphasis is on the noi, and it's an uh on both sides of (coughs) U-A. It's Anoya, and it is a noun. Okay. All right. Uh, So... Is it is Anoya the belief that only one person is out to get you? <laughs> Idiocy or an aggravating child? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, uh, what was the what was B? B was idiocy. Which I suppose is the state of being an idiot. Idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but it is a noun, apparently. It's a thing. Person, place, or thing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I am going to say it. Uh, I'm going to go for B again. I'm going for B. All right. Mark is going for B. Hunter? C. Hunter is going with C. And Mark gets the point. Yes. Ah, very nice, very nice tie. All right. Yes. I like that. I like that. <laughs> All right. We are tied at one apiece with three All right. Less. I can feel the pressure mounting. <laughs> um, so, all right. The third word is uh, starts with an R, and it is ranivorous. 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 That is spelled R A N. I V O R O U S. It is an adjective. Ag- adjective. Adjective. Ad- adjective. I unpacked the adjective. <laughs> um, <clears throat> all right. So, does it mean <laughs> if, or rather, if you are renivorous or somebody calls you renivorous, does this mean you are rhinoceros eating? <laughs> Dung eating or frog eating? B. I'm going to go with C. Did you say B, Hunter? Yes. Okay, Hunter. And Mark has gone with C. Mark gets the point. It is, in fact, really? frog eating. Yes. yes it is. Uh, One of my first adventures in the audio realm was when I was in high school and a guy was uh, looking for people to write scripts. He was going to try and uh, save the world of quadraphonic sound. And he thought the best way to do that would be to create some original audio dramas. So a friend of mine and I wrote a piece called, uh, uh, what was it? It was... um, uh, uh, Adventure in Rio Rana, Ooh. Ooh. which was Spanish for frog, see, Rana. Nice. Rana. And it was about a guy who parachutes into the jungle, and his parachute gets hung up in the trees. Uh-oh. And he, he's broken his hands Ooh. on his descent and cannot release the parachute. And these carnivorous frogs begin showing up as night falls. Oh, no. And, oh. They, be- and they begin piling up underneath him, getting <laughs> closer and closer. <laughs> oh, my God. That's a fun concept. That is a fun concept. Anyway, so that, that ancient piece of 
information rang a bell in my head when you were reading those descriptions. Is that funny how it works? <laughs> yeah. That's from my what I understand. That's basic. Now I haven't seen this movie yet, but I've been wanting to. But that's essentially uh, uh, how Slumdog Millionaire works. Or uh, the movie, mm. more or less. I, I think oh. the reason why he knows the answers is because yes, he has specific from... memories that. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you can get to, to witness these memories that he's having is my understanding. Like, again, I, I, I usually see this director's work. Like, I've seen many of Danny Boyle's films or had up to that point, but I had not gotten around to that one because it was not a very heavy movie watching period at that time in my life. Mm. And now it's like I got some catching up to do. I got movies I need to watch. You know? There you go. Get to it. Like, like Tusk. Get yeah, on that. Yeah. I do need to, I need to watch <laughs> Tusk at some point. Get it. Get, get on that. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been talking about the movie Tusk for as long as this uh, uh, soundcast has been alive, and that's been four years now, and to date, Tyson has not yet to watch Tusk. So we all need to, to, to rally, up, rally up here and get him to watch Tusk, because he will not be disappointed. I have to admit, I have not seen Tusk, even though I am both a Kevin Smith and a Justin Long fan. Ah, see? They're, yes, they're both quite good. I I, yes. I do enjoy Justin Long. I've I've enjoyed anything he, I've seen him in in uh, Kevin Smith stuff and also regular stuff. Uh, like they shared time on screen in uh, that the fourth Die Hard film. Yes, and yes, um, of course Zach and Miri. He was in Zach and Miri. Yes, God, that was yep. funny. And then, uh, and of course he was in Galaxy Quest. Oh God, that's right. Yes, he was. That's, that's right. That's right. right. That was a great movie. That that movie actually does come up every now and then on the show, and that is uh, I, I, it is time to watch that one again. But first, I want to see that new documentary that they did, and I, I can't remember what it's called. Hey Google, what's the uh, <laughs> Galaxy Quest documentary called? Never surrender. A Galaxy Quest. <laughs> According to Amazon.com, oh. Never surrender. Okay. A Galaxy hey. Quest documentary. Yes. Thank, thank you, Google. All right. And of course, uh, Justin Long also has a podcast called Life is Short. Does he? Which we have featured a clip on Succotash at some point, and I have reviewed for Vulture.com. Oh, gosh. Yes, he does. And oh. what's funny is when he did Tusk, he, he's playing a, a, you know, a character of a podcaster. I never, at that point, never even did podcasting until uh, very recently, so... It was interesting. Early on in the pandemic, uh, he was up in, I think, upstate New York, and his brother is the producer of the, his show, and they were quarantined because his brother had got had contracted COVID. Oh, no. Um, I mean, it was apparently mild form. I don't think he was suffering horribly, but they were in a lockdown mode because they couldn't go back to the city. They couldn't go back to New York. They were in some cabin up in upstate New York doing their show. Wow. What was it? What was this called again? Uh, Life is short. Life is short. Okay, it's a feel-good podcast. Sounds like it. It also is, isn't that what um, that was Warwick Davis's like little show that he did oh, with Ricky yeah, Gervais. Yeah. I think it was called yeah. Life is Short. That's right. I do need to see more of that, but I, I've only seen the the stuff with some of the stuff with Liam Neeson, which is just mm. hilarious. Uh, with Liam Neeson being the worst improver ever was the, <laughs> the was the um, Premise, premise. That. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Oh, I, I have, I have full blown AIDS. <laughs> Something like that. Try, try a scene with me. Come on, try a scene. Um, ding, ding, ding. Hello, we're closed. Blocking <laughs> terrible. I love. I also love improv humor. Like uh, if, every time I see it pop up in something, it's always the funniest thing to me. Like they're. One of my favorite improv jokes uh, was probably in an episode of 30 Rock, where um, it's Tina Fey's character, Liz Lemon, and then uh, with Jenna, oh gosh, what was the blonde lady's name? I can't remember her name. Wodzia Kovitz. It's some Polish sounding yeah, name. Was, yeah, I got a great name. Uh, Krak- Krakowski. Jane Krakowski? Krakowski. So yeah, so they're they're doing a scene where it's like you know remember when we used to do improv? Of course, it's cutaway humor. So then it cuts away to the scene that they're talking about, <laughs> and um, Tina Fey I think takes the suggestion. Liz of the characters, it's like um, so I need uh, two two people who might meet or something, you know, and uh, and it's I heard um, I heard guy from Sling Blade. <laughs> I think she, I think it was I think she might have said Carl from Sling Blade. I heard guy from Sling Blade and Oprah Winfrey. Thank you. <laughs> and then so 
Tina Fey starts going into character and goes, mm, I really do love these biscuits and mustard. And then Jane Krakowski goes, <laughs> no, you don't, Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> to me, that's a perfect joke. I love that. Yeah. Cause then it just, that. and then it's onto something else. It's like, boy, you only get to make that joke once. That's a great one. Um, all righty. The, uh, next word or the second to last word, the pentultimate word. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> is Caseyation. Caseyation. That is kind of like Casey, kind of like Casey Kasem of the eighties of American Top Forty. <laughs> yeah, Casey Kasem. Yes. The word is Casey Kasem from the top. Um, <laughs> no, it's Caseyation, which is spelled uh, C A S E A T I O N, and it is a noun. Does it refer to? Uh, could sorry. you spell it one more time? Oh, I'm certainly, sorry. certainly. Um, C A S E A T I O N. Great, thank you. No problem. <clears throat> Does it refer to when beer making goes bad? Conversion into cheese or armpit dandruff? <laughs> Uh, there's a bell ringing dimly in my head, but it's probably ringing the wrong tone. But I'm going to go with B, the cheese making thing. Blessed are the cheese. The cheese makers. <laughs> and uh, Hunter, do you have a guess? A. Going with A, which is when beer making goes bad. Yep. Alrighty. Mark with the point. Ah, it isn't. That bell, that bell was ringing. Uh, <laughs> it didn't, and it was a queso bell. Yes. <laughs> I feel like there's a step missing in that joke. <laughs> I got there. Yeah. I got there. I just built my own bridge. <laughs> uh, bridge of cheese. Uh, let's see. Uh, yes, so that's that's what that one is. Well, the score is currently three to one. Uh, I might as well give the last word. Uh, it can either be a, a. I'm sorry, I'm not sure what I'm trying to say here. I'm just looking at the page, thinking this happens occasionally. I'll like read something, and I'll think something, and then things will bump, bump up against each other, and it'd be like the cars went off the road. But I'm back, <laughs> <laughs> and better than ever. Uh, so let's see here. The last word begins with an H and it is, uh, Hamble. Hamble. That is spelled H-A-M-B-L-E. And it is a verb. Okay. And... <clears throat> Is Hamble to cripple a dog by cutting out the balls of its feet, sneezing while shaking someone's hand, or involuntary eye crossing? A. Hunter says A. It's such so oddly specific. Uh, A. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, what uh, else could it be? Uh, yeah, it's definitely A. You guys both got a point on that one. <clears throat> <laughs> However, the score is now Mark with four points to Hunter's two points. Mark is the winner of What Do These Mean Words Mean for the Week? What's it? Very good. Yay! Yay! What disturbs me about that last one, Hamble, is I worked for a guy for a couple of years named, uh, his last name was Hambleton. H A M B L E T O N. Did he come from a long line of, of dog paw destroyers? It's possible. <laughs> Is anything Don't possible? Know. Hamilton. The only, thing that, the only thing that came to mind was misery when uh, Annie yeah. Wilkes uh, introduced, uh, what's his name, to uh, hobbling. Con. Yes, James Kahn to hobbling. Yes. She's like, you know what they used to do in the, uh, uh, the diamond mines, Paul, when someone would steal a diamond? Don't worry, they didn't shoot them. <laughs> but they had to make sure they can go on working again. <laughs> Whatever you're thinking of doing. <laughs> Please don't do it, any. 
That's it's okay. okay. I love you. <laughs> That's all I can remember. I, I, it's just, I love you so much. Or so, yeah, that, I'm going to have to see that movie again eventually. As it was really good. I mean, she was great. And she won an Oscar for that. Or she did. Oh. First, first, you have to see Tusk. So it's a good yes, quest. Yes. Yeah. Uh, That's right. You got to see Tusk first. So. Well, I heard they're basically the same movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I Well, kind that. of in a way, you're right. Because yeah. like Justin Long isn't allowed to leave the cabin that he's in or whatever it is. I just remember seeing the trailer. I don't really... I, I'll look for it on one of the streaming services at some point. Uh, so let's just recap real quick here. So we had uh, M for Macromaniac. We had A for Anoya. We had R for Raniverse. C for Caseation. And then an H for Hamble. It's Mark Hershaw. It's my, my name and <laughs> yes. my first letter of my first name. Yes. yes. Well, that is Yay. the custom. There's always the method. Sorry. High, high praise indeed. That's yeah, always that, that, the method uh, behind our madness. So, uh, if you'll excuse me, I'll just take off his jacket and we can resume. Uh, feel free to <laughs> talk amongst yourselves. And uh, and I cannot hear you now. All right, let's talk about him. Then, if let's, can't yes, hear let's, it. Yeah, it, right. Let's talk well, about it behind his back. But he'll probably end up just cutting Ooh. this part out <laughs> because he's not in. <laughs> no, he'll leave it in. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hey, he's back. Yeah, shh. Don't say nothing. I also know that Hunter was saying some terrible things about you. Terrible. Me? <laughs> You're the one that said he had a problem. <laughs> well, just a problem. Right. Just a problem. So yeah, I wish I had. I wish I just had a problem. That would be fantastic. <laughs> I guess it would depend on which problem. Like, True. Person, which, like, what's the worst problem to have or the best one of all the problems that we could possibly be having? Well, we just well, seem to seem well on our way of getting rid of our worst problem collectively. <laughs> I mean, collectively. Right? Again, we never like um, really get political on the show, but yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think we uh, I think we did one show that I don't know if people like. I think people might tend to avoid episodes of our shows that have uh, anything that resemble the name Trump in our title. So I've, oh, tried, yeah. I've tried to not do that. Like I did one episode four, I think it was, and it was called uh, Trellalump, Jason and Bill. And <laughs> it's got the most, it's got the least listens to. <laughs> it, it probably does. And we, we talked about Jason is re- reference to the Friday the 13th. Cause we talk about Friday the 13th movies a lot or have talked ah. about them. Uh, Bill is Bill Murray. Cause I think we've also talked about zombie movies and, Yes. Zombie yeah. Land. And then, uh, although actually he's in a new Jim Jarma, a newer Jim Jarmusch movie with zombies in it. Now that I think about it. He is. He is. Well, it was mildly funny. Was it? It was all right. I, I, yeah, it was okay. It also what? had uh, Adam Driver in it. Oh. He's well, good. well, actually, actually, Tyson, uh, you, you're, you're forgetting the uh, the sacred coveted rule is, is that we never talk about politics because, remember, four years ago I said this was a show that – you can escape your problems Excuse in case you know you had problems, right? But it was okay if a guest brought politics into the mix and started talking about it. So we're not oh. actually bending any rules. Yeah, yeah, sir. Remember? No, no, yeah. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, hey, I, was yes. gonna, I just realized this coffee mug. I was looking for my succotash mug, but couldn't find it. I think it's in the dishwasher. But uh, you'd been talking about improv before, um, Hunter, and I wanted to show you this mug here. I don't know if it'll, it keeps keying out. Let me see if I can it's get keying this. Keying out. Yeah. I, it's uh, fading out of existence. Frisco. There, there we go. Oops. Uh, oops. Nah, now you can't see it. Now you can't. There, there, there you go. Uh, but this was the name of my uh, my improv class I used to have here in San Francisco. Nice. In Frisco for Free Range Improv School and Company. Oh, I like that. Nice. Free and, Range uh, Improv. Yes. Um, anyway, minor point that listeners <laughs> completely didn't get to see. Oh, that's, well, I saw, they'll get to see part of it at, at some point. Maybe we'll do a still frame. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, that's interesting because now Jim Jarmusch actually he was in, he was in Sling Blade briefly. Now that I think about he it, he was. Yeah, I don't. He what, was what? Uh, the guy that sold. Uh, I think his name is Carl. I think his name was Carl. Yeah, Carl uh, sold yeah. Carl his first. I think his first ever batch of French fries. Oh, so he wanted biscuits. Okay. Like yeah, biscuits from there. He's like, yeah, yeah. We have, uh, we have French French fries. And That's then right. French fried taters and said, yeah, yeah, they're t- or something like that. He has like yes. Uh, he ends up liking yep. them, of course. But yeah. yes, the French fried taters. You got some French fried taters in there because I was real hungry, son. Ah oh, man, 
<laughs> yeah, I used to do an impression of Carl. I think everybody did. But um <laughs> but yeah, that yeah. Well, I don't know. Maybe not everybody. Of course not everybody. But um so that that is that was our fun little uh quiz. Um there was yeah. something about words. Oh, I had heard uh, or read rather of two or I'd read of one and heard of another case where a a product a well-known product went out uh, it's usually cars, I think, and its name didn't translate well. For one was the Chevy Nova, which I think in Spanish-speaking countries translates to "doesn't go." I, I <laughs> You're right because that car doesn't go. I hate to burst the bubble of uh, some naming stories, but the Chevy Nova story is actually not true. Ooh, it's apocryphal. Ooh, it is apocryphal. And I'll tell you why, because while the two words Nova uh-huh. in Spanish does say, does mean doesn't go. They also call an exploding star in Spanish, a Nova. Oh, oh okay. And okay. so the word collected together, uh, made perfect sense. It's just the car just didn't sell well down there. <laughs> maybe maybe it's one of those word of mouth things. Like if people just hear it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. There's um, there's some great word of mouth ones, and then there's some some great real stories. What was your second one? Second one was the uh, the MR2 not doing well in France because uh, in French MR2 uh, is pronounced MR2. Ah, I'd not heard that one. I love it. I'll put that one in the book. Okay, cool. A couple a of the couple of the uh, well it's in my head but uh, a couple of the other interesting ones um, I remember this happening it was probably in 1996 or 7 Reebok had a new women's running shoe that they introduced uh, that was you know aimed at women and it was called uh, the Incubus and it lasted on shelves for less than a week as somebody pointed out to them, well, you know, an incubus is a male demon that rapes women in their sleep. (laughs) Yes. And apparently nobody at at Reebok (laughs) realized that. (laughs) Or the people that created the name didn't look deep enough. I think they just liked the sound of it. No, we just we just we just want you to wear these shoes, ladies, and uh, you know that's going to summon a male rapist demon to come to you in your sleep. So that didn't do well. It's amazing. <laughs> I mean, it's like somebody could have been, well, that's, that's my favorite William Shatner movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it, all in Esperanto. <laughs> that's right. Starring William Shatner as the, uh, as the incubus. Oh, no, I think he was just a guy. But yeah, no, I don't know who the, I think, I think it was actually a female demon in the movie, though, and which would have been a succubus. succubus. A succubus, yes. right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. It's actually a great song by Kevin Diamond called Incubus. Uh, Kevin Diamond is a local artist uh, in the Humboldt Arcata area. He had oh, okay. Album called Lost in Public, which you can find on www.archive.org somewhere. If you, if you, <laughs> okay. Or just Google Lost in Public and spell diamond with a D-Y. Um, he uh, layers all his music on a, like a four-track recorder. So it's like pretty... I think he did all... It, multi-instrumentalist, multi-vocalist. Uh, it's great. What I guess would be considered outsider art. But um, Oh, okay. But like it's, it's kind of Zappa esque in spots. It's just, um, but really creative, fun stuff. Cool. Yeah. In my in 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 I M H O. In my honest opinion, <laughs> or humble opinion, that's what it is. Very good. Oh, so, um, yeah. <clears throat> well, what else is going on, gentlemen? It's a great question, Andre. That is a great question. Well. So I uh, had to kill uh, two goats and, uh, you know, uh, slaughter a lamb for, for, you know, my eternal youth. And uh, I, I got done with that before doing the show. I'm only kidding. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're, are you kidding in that you didn't do it yet? Or you're kidding right. that you actually did it? I, I didn't do it yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, are they? Oh, I thought, I thought when you when you started that story, I actually thought maybe it was for the upcoming holiday season. That there was going to be like that was the food. It's like, well, you know, right, right, right. We're going to have our got Thanksgiving tur- goats and our. <laughs> well, I mean, if if I was in the uh, literal business of killing animals, uh, which I'm not, mind you, um, I have wild turkeys in my backyard that just you know come in, do their thing, and they leave. So I mean, you know, I, I kind of consider them pets at this point. Oh yeah, but you know what? No one would miss one. <laughs> You're right. Nobody would. <laughs> 
It's like, come here, turkey, gobble, gobble. Those that we have, we have them where I run here in uh, Northern California, Le- less northern than where Tyson is. Somewhat. Uh, but uh, they look gamey as hell, man. They must just be so stringy and horrific to eat. Mm. <laughs> yeah, with the right amount of char on them, I bet they're pretty good. Yeah. Well, maybe you could be right, or you know, you could make it into a turducken and stuff it with something plumper. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Turkey Day is coming up, and uh, you know we are in 2020, which has been an unusual uh, year, obviously, with uh, so many things. Um, I want to, you know, we should remind everyone to keep their numbers small for Thanksgiving, not go, uh, not get uh, overdo it, um, you know, because of the COVID-19 thing. So, I mean, listen, guys, if, if gr- not you guys, but uh, well, of you guys, too, I guess um, if grandma, if yeah, the audience, if grandma is used to cooking your food for Thanksgiving, just put in your order request and she'll come out with your food like kind of like McDonald's drive through, you know, and then you just drive away <laughs> and, and call it call, call it a day. It's Thanksgiving curbside no. service. Right. No, we're doing uh, we're not cooking. My wife and I and. uh my uh, my stepson were just the three of us. Um, I am going to go over and visit my mother who lives uh, not too far away from me because she lives by herself, and um, I've been the only one kind of in the family that's in her in her little um, bubble. Uh, and so uh, she was going to come over to our house, and uh, just we said, yeah, you know what? Just why don't don't put yourself out? So I'm going to go over there and see her. And then we're going to, but I, we order our food. We're having like Whole Foods, giving them a free plug. Whole Foods cook the meal. You can nice. order the whole meal, you know, and you go pick it up the day nice. of. Because um, my wife's got to work the day before, like on Wednesday. And so she goes, I don't want to get up and have to cook Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> yeah, I hear that. We're gonna be I don't doing, blame her. We're going to be doing a half turkey this year that we split with my folks. And then we're going to do a Zoom call with everybody. Oh, there you go. We'll get there my, you go. Uh, get them. Get my relatives, uh, get my brother and his partner in Oregon, and uh, I'm guessing Laura will probably be in the other room with Jareth. So, oh, okay. So I don't know why I had to go into the particulars of who's going to be on what computer, but um, I'm glad you did. <laughs> He's I'm like, glad. I'm going to be on this computer in this room. Laura's going to be in the other room with no computer because I'm taking that away so she can't crash my Zoom party. <laughs> right. There you go. Yeah. Um, but no, we did a successful test of Zoom uh, earlier this year, probably for my brother's birthday. I'm thinking, yep, that's what it was. And so we're going to attempt to do that again. Should yeah, I can get? I can give you guys a. Speaking of Zoom and, th- and Thanksgiving, if you're interested, I can give you a peek at my uh, editorial cartoon that I'm doing for this week's Half Moon Bay Review Weekly Newspaper. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, which is entitled "Thanks Zooming." Thanks, Zooming. Uh, let me see if I can get it open here, and I'll uh, share my screen with you. Let's see. Here we go. Let's get that open, and let me see if I can make this. I've never used screen share on Skype before. Let's see whether it actually works. Okay. So it should show up on you uh, here, probably. Go. Start sharing. Ah, there we go. There we go. Ah, perfect. I, I'm in the way. Together. I don't know if you can see if it's big enough to make out. Oh, I can. I can see it clearly. I can as well. Uh, let's see here. Oh. So yeah, for the listeners, it's a nine-up <laughs> Zoom call, but it's all cartoon and it's just hideous faces of family members. <laughs> one guy picking his nose, one guy cramming food in his mouth, just a close-up. <laughs> Aunt Cheryl. Aunt <laughs> Cheryl, who's out of focus with a big th- oh, fingerprint on the lens. <laughs> Cousin Dan, who's fallen asleep. That's uh, somebody's let their baby be in front, who's just drooling and obviously typed his own name into the thing because it doesn't make any sense. Oh, and then there's there's old grandpa, who's got still user 53444. <laughs> oh, okay. I was that's a random user or what, but no, I get that's funny. It's even better. And Larry picking his nose. <laughs> <laughs> and Max the dog. And then Jaden. Then Jaden, the, the surly teenager. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway. Now, the dog, actually, the dog actually reminds me of, um, of um, a couple of funny stories. <laughs> yeah, well, let me uh, 
Let me stop sharing. You can share share your funny stories. Ooh, you guys have reversed positions. That's interesting. There we go. I think it stopped sharing. Yes. Let me see if I have to continue sharing. There we go. There. So now this is what... Now, now it's okay. the other way around. It's reversed. That's all right. Yeah, it's fine. So, be, be, all right. So... As as Tyson knows, this is the last studio for me anyway, as far as uh, anti-social show. So the studio prior to this was a basically a den in an apartment, and the den, of course, I had to take over. So it had a living room, a den, that sort of thing. But the, the den really had no privacy. It was it had like a big old archway into the living room and an archway into the kitchen, so it was open for anyone just to walk in. So for an entire year that we were recording the show, um, I had cats. Uh, cause we have four cats that would just randomly walk in, jump on the desk and, and make their way into the show. And, and of course, if you see the videos, you'll see like a cat on the window, a cat on the desk and <laughs> cat on my shoulders. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's absolutely going to be a video eventually and you'll, we will get to see a cat <clears throat> walking through the frame at some point. So uh, yes. I don't remember which episode, but, uh, it'll, it'll be there. <laughs> after, it's after 74, but before 89, oh, I think. <laughs> <laughs> that's my guess um well that that's that's why the missus really loves this this house because in those days in that den where the archway was that walks into the kitchen um you walk out of the kitchen and you make a left that was the bedroom mm. so if you had the bedroom door open you could see the light from the studio and you can actually hear like everything so trying to sleep was almost impossible so i used yeah. to have to just take the cats, lock them in the bedroom, close the door. This way she didn't have to see the light and I can still record. Nice. So, but now all that problems, all those problems have been uh, properly resolved. Thank God. Because like I said, the bedrooms are on the other side of the house. Perfect. You know, <clears throat> it, it really does. Mm -hmm. I took this, I took this room over. I'm like, okay, this is my domicile. <laughs> I got really lucky the way the sound uh, works in here. Cause uh, in this wall that's directly across from me is my uh, son's bedroom. But he has a light noise maker uh, going on at night, and uh, and it's, oh right. So there's not a lot of sound transfer. You notice know, the uh, the floor for the most part is like it's tile. I mean, it's like some kind of mm. linoleum looking wood stuff. So it be really reflective theoretically. But I've got a lot of sound dampening various things around here. So uh, and meanwhile, uh, my wife is at the other end of the house, so she's you know doesn't get any. The only voice that she would hear is if. If uh, our baby monitor gets tripped, if I go too loud, and oh, <laughs> I, I've I've laughed out loud at least once, and uh, it hasn't been a problem. You, yet. you guys, you guys, please continue. I got to take this call real quick. Sorry, audience. Sure. Sorry, Mark. No problem. No worries. Okay, now we can talk about Hunter now that he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> so, there's always a chance that I would have to leave suddenly in case uh, my kid wakes up in the middle of the night. But of course, he's been sleeping uh, pretty well lately, so that's good. How old is he now? He will be 22 months yeah, on the 27th. So he's wow, almost two years. Almost two years old. Yeah, exciting. He must be speaking by now. I assume he's definitely making word-like things, <laughs> word-like objects, and lots of them. I mean, his his variation has changed up quite a bit. It's pretty fascinating. Yeah, I love watching little kids because they think they're having a conversation because they just make blathery noises because that's what they hear when other people are talking that makes sense <laughs> yeah so they just because my grandkids were the both of them were the exact same way when they got to be probably about that same age they'd just be gabbering away and saying absolutely nothing but just acting like they're conversing that's hilarious <laughs> that's uh yeah these uh, it reminds me of uh, there's a video of um what English sounds like to people who don't speak English. Uh, there's mm. a couple of those on YouTube, and one of them I think is called Squirrel or something. And it's two people approximating a conversation in English that doesn't make any sense, but it sounds like it should. It's got the right rhythms to it and whatnot. It's it's very much like the um, that song Prees and Colon Ends in a Chusel. I'm unfamiliar with that tune. Gosh, I can't remember what the name of the... the it's uh, an Italian singer. So it's basically a, a song that's made by a person who's, whose native language is Italian and sings in Italian. And he created this song to sound kind of like rap music, although it sounds more like disco. And it is complete gibberish, 
but it sounds kind of like English. So it's it's another one of those things. So that's one of the, oh, that's interesting. One of the earliest things. Yeah, prison colon ends in choosel. <laughs> Uh, if you ever get a chance, I, I, I wish I could. Okay, hold on. Uh, okay, Google. Who performed the song Prison Call and Ensign and Choosel? Prison Call and Ensign and Choosel was recorded by Adriano Celentano. Adriano Celentano. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's that's quite a... Yeah, and meanwhile, there have been covers of it, which is interesting because it's not... Not only is it not English, it's not a language. It's... <laughs> So like I love stuff like that when people get the get nonsense um, exact in yes. so exact that it just you know but that's how, I guess that's how people I'm, recognize I'm more, I'm more impressed that the Google assistant could actually understand what you were asking no kidding yeah that's I was I, it was a toss of whether or not it was going to do that but um, she jumped right on it really did now she didn't know how to say Adrian Salentano but it was a great well, approximation. Yeah, she's only a few years old. I mean, give her some time. Okay, Google. Yeah. Oh, shoot. I just did it. Okay, so, and then I can hear me. So now it's transcribing, but I'm saying at the moment, stop. No, no, I think stop will work. Nope, nope, it didn't stop. It's still. <laughs> you can turn it off if you need to. Sorry, I don't understand. <laughs> of, course, of course, I don't understand. I, I don't know how to turn it off. So, yes, I have found that uh, if I say the word, and I've just mouthed the word O and the word K, or the letter O and K together, and then say something directly afterwards. Sometimes it'll it'll activate because saying is its trigger. Yes, yes, it's it's like um, with my uh, iPhone and whatnot. I'll be listening to a podcast in the car, and if a word comes across that sounds like her name, mm. she will suddenly the podcast will go off. Oh no! And she will tell me she doesn't understand the question. <laughs> Or or Alexa, which is in the other the other room, so they can't they can't hear me. Like you have to say Alexa before you talk to it. So that's its yes. trigger. So I, I'll say thank you to it a lot. But I want you to say thank you. I'll be Alexa, and yes. there's a blue thing to do it. And thank go, you, thank you, and it'll say you're welcome. <laughs> have a great day, or something. But also, well, if I say something like I'd like some to somebody else in the room, if it's saying anything that sounds vaguely like Alexa, it'll it'll trigger. Yeah. So yes. But it is more difficult, I think, to say something that sounds like Alexa accidentally than it is to just say, okay. Yes, exactly. I said it slowly. It didn't trigger. It didn't trigger when I said it slowly, so that's good. Sorry, we were talking about AI a bit, Hunter. Yes. Yeah, that was a, uh, unfortunately, speaking of day jobs, that was a, a work call. Oh. And I, I am, unfortunately, for the first time in the history of this podcast, being summoned. Oh. oh. So, well. yeah, I'm going to have to uh, cut out, gentlemen. I am so sorry to everybody. Um, uh, we got a good uh, uh, session. Yeah, it's almost it's almost an hour. We can wrap it yeah. up. I'm sure you probably okay. tomorrow. Um, it just wouldn't be the same without you, Hunter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. And thank you for coming on. Oh, it's um, my pleasure, guys. Are you kidding? We'll have to get you on again. Um, if you, That'd be great. We could. Absolutely. Right, you are certainly invited. Um, we are going to be continuing to do shows. We might take a little break around the holiday season. Not sure. Hard to say. Okay. Probably because I think everybody should to some to some to some extent. <laughs> to some, yeah, right. But we'll to see. Some, uh, right, right, right. So Very you're, good. You're pretty much like you really just like you're like you're like you really got to wrap it up, right? It's like like you're not like yeah, I got 15 minutes to spare. It's like you got to like go go, right? Yeah, I gotta go go. I well, okay, I got cool. like maybe like ten minutes to spare, so it's not a big deal. But I don't want to push my luck. <coughs> what I'm saying I didn't want to be like, oh, that's nice that you have to go, Hunter. So anyway, Mark, um, and then like go for like another fifteen minutes or so. I'm the boss. Do you guys need to like wrap up your show without me on here? Is that? Uh... Oh, no. oh no, you can stay on. You can stay on. Right. Because uh, next time you come on, I have some very uh, uh, I have some questions that I had prepared that I was oh. going to ask. And I would like to uh, get a, the opportunity to ask these questions next time you come back. Let's do that then. Right. Okay. We'll, we'll do it. Shall I do the uh, the wrap-up thing that we normally do then, Hunter? Uh, of course. Okay, then. Well, that's about all the time we have for Antisocial Show. I'm Tyson Sainer. And I am Hunter Block. And I say, I'm Mark Hershon. Oh, go, that's okay. Uh, go ahead. And I'm Mark Hershon. Be decent to each other. Absolutely. Peace. Oh. Have a good time, folks. 